All right, guys, yesterday a lot of you sent me an email saying UK Bump Keys had just listed a brand new product on their website and asked me to grab it. So I didn't want to be last. I wanted to be first. So I hopped in the Lock Lab Learjet, jetted over there. I was first in line when the door opened. I grabbed it and I'm fresh bag. No, just kidding. I was given a chance to, for advanced purchase so I could do a review on the opening of these. Uh, this is the new Polaris kit. And we're going to talk about him and play with him in, in just a moment. What I really want to show you, though, is something else that comes with the Polaris, something you don't see very often with lockpicking gear, and that would be some instructions. Unbelievable. There, Chris Dangerfield, the owner of UK Bump Keys, has put together a 14-page pamphlet. Now, these, as I look through this, I printed mine out. This comes electronic, but as I've leafed through this, I've I realized that there's a lot of things in here that we probably should have talked about as far, you know, uh, lockpicking education, like how to hold the rake. Never really discussed a lot of this stuff for rakes, the how to use a rake. A lot of guys just shove it in and pull it out and call it raking. But there's a lot of things that I learned over a very long period through trial and error, experimentation. And I just figured out how to do it all by myself over many, many years. And in 15 minutes looking through this, I realized that Chris has everything covered why you would want to tilt your pick while you're raking, if you want to use elliptical movement uh, while you're picking, and why, how to do it, vibrating them, just all kinds of things. Seesawing, we call rocking. Everything having to do with rakes is inside of here. So if you're a new picker and you are looking for uh, a new set of rakes, this might be the one you want to go for because everything he talks about here, all the different rake types and how to use them, those rakes are indeed in here. This is, as I said, the Polaris. It sells for $64.99. Call it $65. Bucks, $64.99. Uh, when you open it up, first thing you notice is the case. It, it's pleather, so it's going to make your butt sweat, even though it's the size of a wallet. Uh, guaranteed. Non, non permeable. But the neat thing about this that I have never seen before is this. Notice that. It's a leather uh, magnet. Hold this thing together. So when you drop it, you know, all your stuff's not going to, it's not going to bust open, all your stuff fall out. Also, when you open it, it's kind of tactical. You don't hear that whoosh like you do with Velcro. I mean, it totally silent. Very cool. Ten picks inside of here. And if you're like me and you can't really count, they are conveniently numbered for you. One through ten. Um, eight of these we've seen before. And we're going to spend, spend some time talking. I have a brand new Master Lock I just bought. We're going to try it out on a couple of these. Uh, but these guys, I have never seen those before. We're going to talk about those, and I'm going to try those out for sure. That's, that's really why I brought the lock out, to try these two guys, to see exactly what they do. Um, take a look at the pick. They are all stainless steel. They are 25 thousandths. They have Chris Dangerfield's name on there, and then in case you forget the name of the picks, there's Polaris, and then the number of the pick. Um, you get the complete Bogota family, starting with the dual peak. And when you look at these, again, typical of production picks, these are not rounded or hand finished or anything like that. Uh, I don't think at this price point we could expect it. You know, but to be honest, on rakes, the finish on the edges is not really that critical. We're not going to be feeling our way delicately around in there trying to figure out the position of pins. We're going to be raking them. So, you know, having them no burrs or no sharp edges, that's important, but Having this perfectly mirror finished along the top or perhaps in between the peaks, don't waste your time, guys. These have been tumbled. They're probably good enough to go as is. Um, I might just lightly sand them just to make sure there's no, no uh, sharp edges. I didn't detect any while I've been playing with these. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's try a couple of these. A dual peak, brand new master lock. Let's try them out. Just look what the key looks like here. Oh, God. I can't believe, why do I even try? If there's ever a lock that is susceptible to raking, it's almost like Master Lock's working in partnership with me, but I can assure you that's not the case. I bought this randomly uh, off the shelf. I did not expect this. I definitely, I would not have picked this lock, even for a demonstration of rakes, but just to, they're trying to humiliate me. I know they set me up. So what I'm going to do, I guess, 
uh, let's just open up this lock with every single one of these rigs. That's, uh, how can you not, right? And I guess uh, something that would be neat to show while we're doing that, let's use a couple of the different techniques that um, uh, Chris talks about in his manual. So with this, with this dual peak, what we're going to do, you, you, you pick your, you choose your pick based on the height of the pick. So the height of the pick should not completely fill that slot because then it's going to push all the pins to the very top. And if they're not high cut, then it's not going to, you're not going to have very much luck. But let's try it. What I like to do, I like to slide it in and then right away I can feel there's a lot of resistance. So this pick may not be the right one for this lock. It may be too tall of a profile, but let's try it. We're going to use the technique where we use the horizontal movement. So that's the very first one that uh, Chris talks about in his manual. So slide it in and out. A little bit rough. There we go. It is a brand new lock. So, and of course, brand new pick. So that's how easy it is with the dual peaker. Let's lock him back up and go to his brother. Now, the advantage of having a triple peak over a dual peak is that we're assaulting more of those pins simultaneously. So theoretically, it would take less time. So again, slide them all the way in. Again, same technique. We're just going to slide them in and out, straight in and out. We're not going to oscillate or angle or anything like that. And even with this lock, as I said, it's very stiff. Already, I think we've taken more time than the dual took. But I think when we get to some of these shorter profiles, we might have a little better luck. He's really getting stuck. There we go. All right, triple peak does definitely work. One of my favorite tools. Another one is a quad. It's going to work, again, identically to the previous two, except, again, theoretically, if it's a five-pin lock, you can be able to assault more of them at the same time. Again, this is only a four-pin. I don't know there's a great advantage to using a quad. <laughs> I guess there is. That took no time at all. All right, let's shove him back, and let's talk about these next picks. These are really interesting. We lock him and set him aside for a moment. Number four and five. I've talked about these before. I did a review of some picks, I guess, about two years ago that were released by the Open Organization of Lock Pickers, T-O-O-O-L dot org. Uh, and they had a bunch of mathematicians and engineers do a lot of experiments to, with different frequencies and heights of picks. And they came out with two models. One of them, uh, number, number four in this case, let me get them right here. Number four in this case is what they came up uh, and they called this the quarter wave cycloid. Now it's a little sharper. It's not quite as sharp as the Bogota quad upon which it is based. There's a Bogota on the bottom, number three. That's really sharp, really grabby. Number four, the, cy uh, the cycloid is a little shorter in profile and the peaks are rounded off. They say it's more effective, uh, it's a little more grabby, and it's great for easy locks. The one above it is number five. They call this the quarter wave sinusoid. Again, it's a little more rounded off, slightly different frequency. So let's try number four. Let's just set five down there. So this will be the cycloid. Let me find my tensioner. What did I do with him? So a shorter profile. It should be a little better in this lock. Likes these easy locks. I felt a little bit of a fault set there. Keep that in the center. There we go. Right in the center. Again, they didn't bother with the double or the triple. They just went straight to the uh, four peaker. Number five, the quarter wave sinusoid. A little bit smoother, a little more rounded off. They say these are better for uh, hard locks. Now, I like this model on best pad locks. I've had a lot of luck with them or any lock with a real short profile. Okay, might not be able to... Let me loosen up again and try it again. I wouldn't think we'd have a heck of a lot of trouble with this particular bidding, but some locks don't like certain picks, and this may be the one that he doesn't like. All right, let's try a different technique then. Let's make sure he's uncocked. I'm going to use the same pick. I'm going to slide him in there, and let's do what they call the rocking technique, just up and down. Like we do with the city rake. And there we go. We finally worked our way through. And this is definitely not the ideal pick, though, for this lock. Okay, number five. All right, number six is the fifth wave cycloid. 
So we, again, we got five peaks, cycloid, so he's a little better for even smaller keyways, but a little more grabby because he's a little sharper. Again, we're getting down so small now, it may not be too effective on this, oops, on this master lock. So we have to try another technique, and that would be the elliptical. Try to rake it up and try an elliptical pattern. I think he's just a little bit too short. And there we go. Managed to fight our way through it anyway. Master lock. They'll give it up to a soda straw, right? And the last one is a fifth wave sinusoid. If, if none of them have a chance to get it, it's probably this guy. Make him sure he's locked back up. Again, I'll use the elliptical because of the shape of the pick. And I'm going to try a combination rocking and then a combination horizontal, one of them will get in there, or a combination of them will get us in there. All right, the next one is a city rake, or the L rake, you guys have seen these before, and they are designed for using that rocking technique. They're not really designed for the, um, the horizontal in and out. They're designed to be put in there like this, and this is a perfect bidding. In fact, I'm almost hesitant to look at this. See just how close he is. Oh, surprisingly. I don't see any of them that really line up. There's a few, probably half of them line up and half of them don't. So we're 50-50. The way I like to use this, you just slide them in there, simulate the key, put light tension, and then rock him up and down. And I'm going to slide him in and out while I rake up and down, or rock up and down. I felt a little bit of fault set there. I think I'm close. Let me recock it and try it again. Slide all the way in. And there we go. When these things work, they usually work like on the first attempt very quickly. So L rake or city rake. And now we get to the ones I was really curious about and the ones that I really intended to try this, out, this lockout on. These two guys, I really don't know what to call these. Number nine and ten, I guess that's what we'll call them. Or... I was joking, uh, they, I could call these ink blot because it's like a, a strip of ink or paint was spilled on the ground and they copied the pattern for these things. So we have two sides. So again, this would work a lot like the city rake. I would imagine these would be good for not only raking horizontally, but also for simulating the, the uh, key as we do with the city rake or the L rake. See if we can get them in there. Let's try to simulate it first. Let's take a look. See if anybody's even close. Not really. Let's flip the other side. Again, not really. No, uh, again, 50-50. So let's slide it in that way the first time and just try to rocking. He's a little tall on the profile, I notice. Yeah, he's not, I don't think he's ideal for the, oh, I'll be dang, we got it. I didn't think he was gonna work simply because he was so tall. Let's flip him over and try the other side and try horizontal and elliptical at the same time, and that worked really good. So that's number nine, ink blot number nine. And ink blot number 10, his brother probably will work. Again, let's look at, just out of curiosity, I'd like to know how close these things are. It's almost like having a, a skeleton key. There's a deep one, those two line up. This one should be very close if I shove him in that far. He should almost, let's see if we can make him simulate the key if I can get him in that far. Oh, he won't quite go in that far. It's very close though. Let me rock him. No. All right, let's try the elliptical and rolling and there we go, we got an open. I'm not even gonna bother with the other side. This lock is just, I'm sorry about the pinning on this. I had no idea it was gonna be this, this level really. But anyway, if you're looking for a great set of picks, 25,000, it's all stainless steel. Uh, if you buy only the four that you see here from Tool, the Cycloid and the Sinusoids, it's 30 bucks just for those four uh, uh, from Tool. So 65 bucks, you get a case and all of the other stuff all organized for well, yeah, if, uh, well for you. If I have one complaint, it would be this. Um, the, the tensioners, to me, for ra a rake set really don't make a lot of sense. I would like to see, obviously, bottom of the keyway, because when you're raking, you're usually raking with bottom of the keyway. And if you are going like that, you have the entire top of the keyway to work with. 
If, however, you decide to use a top of the keyway, and I'm going to use the long end because it's inset, when I get him fit in there, you notice he's using up part of my workspace, but even worse, when I slide that in there and I pull him out, he tends to snag on the tensioner and pull him out. So rather than, I mean, we've asked for these to be included in kits for years, they're finally doing it. And this is one instance where I believe they really would have benefited from one or two more bottom of the keyway because this is a, a kit that really demands a bottom of the keyway uh, tensioner. But they gave it to us. These are so easy to make and they're so cheap. But I really would have preferred to have seen a set of, say, like these, the thick one, the medium one, and the thin one. That would be more appropriate for a rate kit. But anyway, $64.95. Uh, you don't have to get on your own Lock Lab uh, Learjet to go over to the UK to pick one of these up. I'll put the link to these. Uh, there's a U They now have a uh, US warehouse. I'll put that down uh, in the link down there. And of course, they're also for sale in the UK uh, warehouse. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Oh, you want to win these? Well, I'll tell you what. Since I flew over there, I didn't see any sense in buying just one. I bought five. So I'm going to have five giveaways of the brand new player. So you, if you win these, you'll be one of the first five guys in North America to get one of these brand new Polaris kits. There's a website in the middle of the page. There's a purple band that says weekend giveaway. I know this is not the weekend. I know this is just Wednesday, but I wanted to be the first to get these and to do a review on YouTube. So we're doing Saturday's review, the weekend review on Wednesday, but click on the weekend giveaway, register with a little bit of luck. You'll be the lucky winner of one of these Polaris kits. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal. If you like what Lock Lab's doing, you can really help me out by subscribing, hitting the like button, and of course sharing it on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks, guys.